In this very interesting interview, as you'll hear for yourself shortly, Chris Packham admits mass immigration into Britain from third world countries is bad for the environment and bad globally, not just for Britain. Of course, he is right. He also says anyone who speaks this truth will usually be called a racist. It's clear he's not racist and he admits people have always moved and that there will be a mass exodus of people to Europe from the developing world in the coming decades. Though he says you can't stop it, I'd say a nation has a right to decide who can and can't move there. From a purely environmental perspective, as Packham says, we have to look at people as a consumer of resources. And rest assured, millions of extra people coming here are going to consume a hell of a lot of our natural resources. One of the ways the West can control consumption and protect biodiversity is population control. And that means, yep, you guessed it, limiting the number of people moving here. And this is the impact more people will have. Firstly, you've got to conquer over green spaces to build them places to live. But despite people like Owen Jones forever saying only 2% of the UK is built on, it also requires more land turned into farmland to feed them and more infrastructure to be built. Not good in what is already one of the most nature depleted countries in the world. It also means importing more food, and we already import around 50% of our food. On top of that, we have water shortages and energy shortages in this country. Clearly, mass immigration is going to put more pressure on those and every other resource in this tiny island. This is from Packham's mouth himself. Take a listen. Food security is, is going to be a, a real issue in, in, the, in the near future. From where, I, where I've been sort of reading your views on this, it, it does seem like overpopulation is quite a firm view of yours. And now you're saying actually maybe maybe I've misinterpreted. I'm, I, you're much more flexible than I, I I sort of sort of presumed. Yeah, no, I'm. I, I think maybe, but the key thing is it it is an elephant in the room that we need to be looking at. You know, it is tied to consumption, obviously. Mm. You know, as and as people migrate into the West, let's be really truthful about it. And mass migration will occur, mm. um, and let's hope that it occurs more peacefully than it has been in in, in recent times, because when those areas become uninhabitable or dangerous, people will move from them. Why shouldn't they? We've always moved a, a, a around the, the planet. Um, and we would need to do that to find security. But pe when people move to the West at the moment, they move with aspirations of good healthcare, good food, um, and, and, and everything else, good quality of life, what they see as a good quality of life. And all of those things are linked to consumption, which means that consumption will naturally therefore rise. So one very simplistic way of regulating that would be to regulate population passively, understand how that population impacts on our resource availability and resource management. And, and this is something which I think we've got to factor into all of the plethora of things that we're going to need to deal with in the very near future. So it's simply not having that conversation because, you know, it's too easily portrayed as, you know, rich white people pointing at lots of poor black people. Oh, I'm not saying that. No, I know you're not, but some people do. Yeah. And, and that's, that's oversimplifying it. And it's certainly not where I come from. Yeah. I'm a racist bone in my body, cell in my body. But, you know, it's... The key thing is to make sure that when we're talking about population, we're talking about consumption at the same time. That, you know, and, and as a consequence, we expect the, their standard of living, their health care, education, everything else to increase. And that means an increase in consumption. And that isn't sustainable. So ultimately, there's a balance to be found here. We have to reduce consumption. There's no question about that. Mm. One of the ways we can reduce that in, in the West, if you like, is reducing the number of people because that's a simple mathematical thing. We, that would reduce it. But that's, as you point out, that's not going to work because our population will continue to rise even if we all stop breeding tomorrow. Um, and as a consequence, we've got to look at other methods, measures of reducing that consumption. But I think having a keen eye on you know, how we are essentially going to feed um, and water the world when it comes to that 10 billion is something that we need to be focused on. It's not something that's being addressed. So consumption is the key thing of those resources, but also managing those resources so that they, they, are, they become sustainable. You know, we understand animal populations. We know how to regulate and manage them. The fact is that we have to look at ourselves as animals because essentially we're consuming the world's resources and there are a lot more of us now 
than than any other species. So that's we're organisms at the end of the day. It doesn't matter what color, creed, religion, politics, anything. We're organisms that are consuming, and ultimately, we'll run out of stuff to consume if we're not careful.